welcome to this ECS uh, setup tutorial. Uh, so to get you started, when you first load in, we'll head up to this little box. This is the module manager. Click that. And any modules that you own, you can go ahead and install. You can also browse. Here are things that you are able to install if you own. After you install those, your game will restart, update, and then you can come into the options menu to configure our game. So here, these system settings, this is as far as your graphics. I have most things turned low or off for uh, these VR recordings right now. Uh, you can definitely turn them up. I generally have them up higher when I'm flying around not recording. So I'll go through all of these options to tell you how much they impact your game and what you should have them on if you have a lower system or how much they impact you. First up, textures. Always want to leave that to high regardless of what system you have, unless you're really having issues. Um, then you can bump it down, but that'll be your cockpit textures and all of that stuff. Terrain textures. Um, I generally have on low even when I'm not recording, because if I'm flying around, I'm high up. I'm not really looking at the terrain. Uh, if you want to, go ahead and have it on high. It doesn't impact uh, too, too much. Civilian traffic, generally dictated by the server. So this generally doesn't matter what you put it to. Um, if anything, have it on low. Otherwise, it just looks like packed highways uh, for cars driving around and whatnot. Water, your own preference for your system. Visible range, you want to put this as high as you can while maintaining a frame rate that is acceptable to you. I have it on ultra right now. I find that I have no need to go any further than this uh, with utilizing targeting pods and whatnot. Heat blur. Your own cosmetic preference, no real impact. Shadows can have a huge impact. Um, generally, I'll only have them on flat only, but that's because I'm in VR. If you're flying on a regular monitor, you can generally bump that up much higher. Resolution, self-explanatory. You want that on whatever it's set to. Aspect ratio, set it to whatever your monitor is. Resolution of cockpit displays. This has to do with the mirrors in your plane. I don't use the mirrors in my plane, so I turn those as far down as they go. If you use the mirrors in your plane, try it on 512. If that's acceptable to you, leave it. If you want more detail, bump it up to 1024. There's no need to use these every frame options. They're just huge performance hits. MSAA. Bump it as high as your system will allow. I'll generally keep it on 2x. Depth of field, I have off. Not a fan of it. Lens effects, uh, whatever your preference is. Motion blur, once again, I have that off. Clouds on ultra. You actually get higher performance on ultra than any of the other settings. These three don't work in VR, so I have them off. You can experiment with them and see what you like. Clutter and grass, kind of self-explanatory. The higher you have this, the more you'll see of it. Um, since I'm in the air, generally, I don't bother with this too much. Uh, I might have it about there when I'm not recording. Same with all of these, I generally keep them about there. It gives me a little bit of them but I don't care too much about that while I'm in the air. Forest visibility, all of these self-explanatory. Higher these are, the more detailed it'll be. Preload radius uh, is how much you're around you your aircraft is going to load in when you load into the game and how much it's gonna keep loaded in as you fly around. Generally, 
you might want to start off at about 30,000. If you're still getting performance hits, bring it down. Um, I have it down for recording and for flying the Apache. Right now in DCS, that has a little bit of a performance hit in that aircraft. So having this here lets me have a smooth experience. There's no real impact to your in-game um, having this this low. Chimney smoke, if you want chimney smoke. It can be a performance hit, so generally I'll only have it on one. That way I can see it, but it's not a huge big deal. Gamma is your game's brightness. I like it on 1.9 for my headset. This option, the filtering, you want that on 16x. That'll reduce jagged lines. Object shadows for terrain. Uh, flat if you still want shadows on the terrain, but you want to help your performance, default otherwise, or off if you're having performance issues. Illumination, I have it on on. These are scales for everything. Raindrops, V-Sync, all that good stuff I've turned on. Um, these don't apply in VR. If you want your cursor to not go outside of your game window, go ahead and check that. And then once you do all of this set up to your liking, you can actually come down here and press save. And that'll save your settings to whatever preset. So you can just go back and test them out. Controls, there will be a separate video for controls for each airplane. One thing to note in here, you can use the drop down to find whatever module you want to do your controls for, and then type in here for what you do want to find. So let's say we want our gear for landing gear. So we type in gear and we see all the landing gears, gears come up. Gameplay, well, these are my gameplay settings. You can play around with this however you like. Uh, most of them are uh, overridden by the server you're flying on. So they generally apply in single player, but this is what I have it set to. Miscellaneous. Once again, generally um, overridden by the server. Some things aren't, so this is what I have it set to. Coordinates, precise will give you more precise coordinates. This option down here will allow you to see you damaging things as you're flying around. One thing I wanted to mention in gameplay, you'll want avionics language set to English. That way if your module is a foreign aircraft, well, assuming you speak English, uh, if your aircraft is a foreign aircraft, say a Russian aircraft, and it has translations available, all of the cockpit will be translated to English. Audio settings. These are my audio settings. Generally you want the major thing is world down to 1%. That way you're not blasting yourself in the ears if you're ever spectating another aircraft or if you eject. If this is even this high, you won't be able to hear anyone you're in a voice chat with. So let's keep that, I keep that on 1%. These are all my other keybinds and settings. Select your output devices. Input if you want. And these settings. I have voice chat disabled because I use Discord at the moment, not the in-game voice. Special. Here we set up special options for our aircraft. These are my settings for the A-10. 
all default. These are the settings I have for the Apache. F16. F18. K50. E51. And then if you're a VR player, these are my VR settings. If you use duper sampling in whatever your VR application is, um, leave this on one and just use the super sampling in your VR. They do the same thing, so you don't want to double up. More options here, you can set your IPD. Um, the mask size, that's that sweet spot in the center, how big you want it to be. I keep that on max. Make sure you uncheck this. That way it'll actually use your helmet resolution. And then if you're streaming, you can utilize these options. It's up to you. That's all of the controls. As far as joining a multiplayer server, we'll click multiplayer. You can change your name utilizing this little draw icon up here. And you can connect to servers either by browsing the list, searching for a server, or in the case of the damned servers, we connect by IP and paste it in here from the info in the Discord channel. All right, that covers general settings in DCS and how to join the server. Thanks for watching.